Hi, I'm Dana. Welcome to Made Every Day. Today we're going to make a really cute felt garland. It's fun, it's easy, and lately I've made it for my friends when they're having a baby so they can take it to the hospital with them to decorate the baby bassinet. So let's get started. You can make a garland for any occasion and any holiday. I've made it for Halloween, for Christmas, for Valentine's Day, but it didn't really dawn on me to make it for a birthday until my daughter Clara was born. She was born a week before Valentine's Day and I had just made this felt garland for our house. And as I was packing my bag for the hospital, I threw it in just so we could continue the holiday at the hospital. And then I put it around her baby bassinet and all the nurses thought that was a really fun idea. So I think every mom should have a cute garland to decorate her hospital room. So let's make one for you or your friend. Here's what you need. Felt fabric in a variety of colors. Felt is a really fun fabric for crafting and sewing. It's different than knitted or woven fabrics because it's made from compressed fibers that are pounded and shrunk together so it doesn't fray at the edges. And you can buy it in 100% wool or in acrylic and polyester blends. It's available at most fabric and craft stores. You can buy it in these pre-cut rectangles or you can buy it by the arm. I bought this stack here at a craft store in some really fun bright colors. But if you want a little more quality 100% wool felt, check some online resources. And the thing I love about that is I can find some really fun shades that I might not find at the craft store. Today, however, though, I'm kind of feeling the bright colors. So let's select our color scheme and cut out a garland. I'm making this garland for a friend and we don't know yet if it's a boy or a girl. It's gonna be a big surprise on the birthday. So I've selected a variety of colors that can go either way. I have some bright shades and I have some more neutral ones. Sometimes I like to throw in this kind of oatmeal-y color, gives a natural vibe to it. And the other thing I like to do is to use some shades that are close to each other, like white and off-white, or hot pink and fuchsia. Now the shapes you wanna cut out is up to you. You can do circles, triangles, squares, if it's for a holiday, hearts, pumpkins, bats. What I'm gonna do is I usually just cut a strip, and then I just start cutting. I'm gonna do circles for this one, and Keep going around. You can actually buy pre-cut felt circles sometimes online, but you know what? I kind of actually like when the circles don't look perfect. I think it gives it more of a homemade and personal touch. So I just cut kind of a little square. I cut my circles and there's no right or wrong here. You can make all your circles the same size. I kind of like to vary them and I'm cutting two layers at the same time so that it goes a little bit faster. So as you can see, I'm just kind of turning my fabric as I go. As you can also see, <laughs> they're not perfectly symmetrical. And then just keep going until you're done with your one strip of fabric. Then, after that, I'll select another color. And I'll cut that one a little bit bigger. Sometimes I cut really small ones. And just keep going. This is a great thing to do at night when you're watching your favorite show or Invite a bunch of friends over and you can all sit and chat and cut out your garlands together. Okay, just keep cutting. This might take a while. Whew, just cut out all my circles and my hand is really tired. One of these days, I think I'm gonna make a garland from all these cool leftover scraps. But right now, let's sew our circles together. Now before you start sewing, consider the thread color that you want to use. I'm using white just because I like seeing that little line of white going down. It's subtle, but it looks cute. When I made a Halloween garland, I used black thread. You can even buy clear thread. So it just depends on the look you're going for. Now I'm threading my machine here, which is pretty easy. I just follow all the markings on my machine. And the thing I really love about this baby lock is this automatic needle threader. I cut my thread, press this little lever, boom, threaded. No more poking around, trying to get it through the needle. Okay, now for my bobbin, I'm gonna stick it right in here where it goes. And instead of using the cool, easy automatic cutter, I'm actually gonna leave my tail out just a little bit. Just pull these two threads so that you have a little bit of a tail so it's easy to hang your garland up. And the last thing I wanna do is I'm gonna increase my stitch length over here a little bit, up to like a 3.5 or a 4. Okay, we're ready to sew. I like to start my garlands with a little heart and end it with a little heart. It's just kind of fun. I already cut these out, so let's get sewing. Put it right into your machine. And with the first one, you wanna do a little forward and back stitch. So 
So write down, when you get to the end, pick up a color, doesn't matter which one, and just start sewing again. Pick up the next color and put that one under. I'm not even lifting my presser foot each time. I'm just feeding the next one right through. Super easy, no forward and back stitch. And I'm not even really thinking about which color I'm grabbing because I like them to be random. In fact, sometimes I put the same color next to each other two times in a row. If you want them to be really super close, you can just push it in even closer. If you want there to be a little bit of space between it, well, you can let it sew for a couple stitches and then put the next one in. Let's see how it looks already. That is adorable. Okay, let's keep going. Let's do pink next. Okay, just keep going all the way down until you get to the desired length. Okay, that's probably good. You can make your garland any length you want, but I find that about three to four yards is pretty good. So I'm gonna take my last heart here and sew it at the end. Take my little heart and sew that in place. Do a back stitch at the end. Lift my needle, and then I'm gonna pull my threads long again so that they have a little bit of extra room to hang this up when they need to. Now the last thing you wanna to do to keep it from getting tangled, I like to cut a piece of cardboard from a box, and then I just wrap my garland right around there. Just like that. You could also cover your cardboard with something like some fun paper so that it looks a little more styled. The other thing I like to do when I'm giving this as a gift is to include a little roll of tape so that if they wanted to tape it to the wall, they can do that, or they can tape it around the baby bassinet. They have some options. Okay, let's wrap my gift and I'll give it to my friend. And there you go. I'm gonna go give this to my friend and I can't wait to see how it looks when her baby's born. For more information and tutorials, check out my website, madeeveryday.com. And for more information on sewing machines, go to babylock.com, where it's all for the love of sewing. I'll see you next time.